In this lesson, we're looking at some properties of logarithms such that we can eventually expand logarithmic exp expressions, condense logarithmic expressions, and these are tools that make it helpful for us eventually to be able to solve logarithmic equations. So first we have these, uh, the product property, quotient property, and power property. And what we're basically saying is if we can take the log of a product, that would be equivalent to taking the sum of the log of the two factors. Similarly, the quotient property. If I'm taking the log of a quotient, that would be equivalent to the difference of the logs of those two divisors. The power property you can think of as taking a log of a power and the exponent kind of getting thrown to the front of your expression as a coefficient. So in example one, we're expressing these logs in terms of these logs. So what you kind of want to be thinking of is how can I express 75 in terms of a combination of uh, powers or products or quotients of 5 and 3. And what I would want you to be able to come up with is the fact that 75 equals 5 squared, which is 25, times 3. And so now I've got the log of 5 squared times 3. Well, I can use the product property to break this product up. So that would be the log of 5 squared plus the log of 3. Now I can't do anything further with this log, but this one has a power, so I can take this 2 and bring it out front as a coefficient now. So it would be 2 times the log of 5 plus the log of 3. This decimal one is a little bit weird to look at unless you think of it as a fraction. So 5 and 4 tenths is equivalent to 5 and 2 fifths when I reduce the 4 tenths. So if I change this to an improper fraction, that is 27 over 5. And now hopefully the 3 is becoming much more obvious to you. 27 is equivalent to 3 cubed. And so now I've figured out how to express 5.4 in terms of 3's and 5's. Now let's express the log of 3 cubed over 5. And basically what we're doing is we're expanding this. So I can first start with this quotient. It would be the log of 3 to the third minus the log of 5. And then I would use the power property to take this 3 and bring it out front. It would be 3 log 3 minus I could look at this problem the same way that we did yesterday. However, since I have a few more tools in my toolbox now, let's use them. So I'm going to rewrite this, this square, this cubic root of 36 as a power. So this is log base 6 of 36 raised to the one third power. Well, I have a power. So I can bring it out to the front of my uh, logarithm. So it'll be 1 third log base 6 of 36. OK, well, um, what's 36? It's just 6 squared. Remember that when you're taking the log of a power and the base of that power is the same as the base of your log, it's like all of this kind of cancels out. And so this 2 kind of comes down, and I've got 1 third 
times 2, and so my answer is just 2 thirds. In this one, I'm going to kind of work in the opposite direction. Back here, I was kind of expanding the log, whereas here, I might think of this as condensing it. So this is a sum. I can rewrite it as a product, therefore. But before I do, I need to bring this power back to the back. So I've got natural log of e to the ninth plus the natural log of e to the twelfth. So that means I've got the natural log of e to the, and remember I'm multiplying these two things together, so that means I'm adding the exponents. So e to the twenty-one. And then finally, remember this is the same thing as log base e of e, to the 21. So once again, it's kind of like all this cancels out and this drops down, and my answer is just 21. Here we're expanding the logarithm. So I have the log base 13 of, and I've got a few things being multiplied together, so I need to make sure to break all of them apart. So log base 13 of 6 plus log base 13 of a to the third, plus log base 13 of b, plus log base 13 of c to the fourth. So I've broken up all of my products. Only thing that's left for me to do is to take any powers and bring them to the front as coefficients. So this would become log base 13 of 6 plus 3 times log base 13 of a, plus log base 13 of b, plus 4 log base 13 of c. And once again, I apologize for some of the poor copy quality that I'm seeing here. Let's make this a 3. And the first thing I'm going to expand is this quotient. So I've got the natural log of 3y plus 2 minus the natural log of 4 times the cubic root of y. Now I can't do anything with this, so you're going to leave that alone. Notice, however, here that I have a product. I need to break that up. Be super careful about this minus sign. Okay, so I have the natural log of 3y plus 2 minus the quantity. Natural log of 4 plus natural log of the cubic root of y. You must have those parentheses there because otherwise you would have this being positive, whereas I'd hope that you'd realize it really is supposed to be negative. Okay, so let's go ahead and distribute that negative out in this next step. So natural log of 3y plus 2 minus natural log of 4 minus natural log of the cubic root of y. But remember that taking the cubic root of y is the same thing as taking y to the one-third power. Okay, so if I now consider this y to the one-third, well now this is a power, let's bring it out to the front as a coefficient. So finally, I would have the natural log of 3y plus 2 minus the natural log of 4 minus one-third the natural log of y. And you know that you're done I know sometimes that's a common concern with uh, expanding an expression. Well, how do I know when I'm done? Notice that everything that I'm taking the natural log of, there's only one factor. Okay, This one, I, I understand if you might be thrown off and think, oh, but the 3 and the y, there's two factors there. 
well, yes, if it was just 3y. But because I'm adding this 2, I can't break the 3y plus 2 apart. Okay? So I'm taking the natural log of something, taking the natural log of something, taking the natural log of something. I've broken it down as simple as I can. So if we can expand an expression, certainly we can condense an expression. So first thing I would advise you to do is notice that these coefficients are going to become exponents. So I have the log base 2 of x plus 1 to the negative 5 plus log base. Notice that I have a sum of logarithms. That means that I can multiply these two things together and condense that in my next step. So I would now have log base 2 of x plus 1 to the negative fifth power times 6x to the third. And something that I'd like you to remember is, as I've mentioned before, a bit of a review from Algebra 2, when you're raising something to a negative power, remember that means you're taking the reciprocal of it. So this x plus 1 that you could almost think of as being over 1, this is going to come to the bottom now. So I have log base 2 of 6x cubed over x plus 1 to the fifth. And that's as condensed as I can make. In this expression, I've got multiple subtractions, and so I'd have multiple divisions. But, ooh, that just sounds really, really ugly. So what I'd like you to think in terms of is, let's keep this first natural log the same. And I'm going to factor a minus out, or a negative out, of the next two terms. So I'll have minus 4 times the natural log of x plus the natural log of x minus 1. And so now I would condense this parentheses into a product first, and then condense this quotient. Okay, so I'm still leaving this first term alone. So it'll be natural log of 3x plus 5 minus natural log of x to the fourth, bringing this coefficient back as an exponent, plus the natural log of x minus 1. So continuing to condense, that'll be natural log of 3x plus 5, still not doing anything with that, minus the natural log of x to the fourth times x minus 1. And now finally, I'm kind of running out of space, sorry about that. This will be the natural log of the quotient 3x plus 5 over x to the fourth times x minus 1. And that's as condensed as you can get on that. The next property of logarithms allows us to take a log and change its base, um, which is very convenient for most of your calculators since most of your calculators do not permit you to enter a base of a logarithm. You're either using the natural log, the ln button, or you're using the common log, the log button. There's a few calculators out there that have the, a, a space for you to type in a log, um, and that's really convenient, but you want to make sure that you know how to use the change of base formula. Okay, so change of base formula, notice I have this log, and I'm changing it from log base B to log base A. And what I'm taking the log base A of is the X, what I'm taking the log of, over 
the base of my original log. So in this example, I could use either the common log or the natural log. I'm just going to use the common log. So the log base 78 of 4212 will equal the log of 4212 over the log of 78. And that I can type into my calculator. So when I find the log of 4212 and divide it by the log of 78, I get approximately 1.92. It's just a formula. So this one will equal the log of 33 over the log of 15. And then you're just typing it into your calculator. And that will give me approximately 1.29. Pause the video for the Your Turn Part C below.